and we're back in the Cornish South. This time we're back at St Ives once again. I know we'd like to start our videos there. But we're heading down this way because Lucy has booked us a thing to make chocolate. I'm not quite make sure. Chocolate. So we're going away for New Year's and I to, to be honest I'd like to tell you what we're doing but this is all on Lucy so <laughs> I don't I don't actually know what we're doing. But if you keep watching, I'm sure you'll find out. little passage through to next street the little quirkiness of St. Ives little hidden gems oh. I love the white walls everywhere brings us out here so we've reached the little chocolate shop now and we're going to begin making chocolate, but look at some of this. All made where we'll be making the chocolate today in the little workshop. I'm back, just there, look. Wow. The amount of people I'd love to buy these tools for to give to them at work for them to find out it's chocolate. Would you be more happy or less happy? More happy. <laughs> White chocolate, milk chocolate. Do you think we can replace our tap at home to this one? Yeah, I'll, like I'll definitely drink more tap water then. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Your little hat and apron. Okay, everybody ready? Yes. Real cocoa bean. Cocoa bean. Cocoa pod. Cocoa, cocoa pod, pod, sorry. It's the beans that make the chocolate, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So they've been ripened, hardened and dry. So these are chocolate moulds and you don't touch the middle, just touch the sides. You can use cotton wool, let's get scrubbing.
like to treat. Very fitting, but when you gone for milk chocolate, of course, go I've gone for white. Delish. Mm. Now, I'm gonna make some little chocolate tokens. Try to make some coins. Yeah, so we've got Christmassy ones reindeer, polar bear, and holly. It's now I've got a little coins. I'm gonna decorate them. So our tokens are in the uh oh Lucy's going for the flip. Hey. Okay, I'll let you do that. I'll give you a Can finish. You touch this with this glove and just take it off for me. Wow, look at that. Look at that, let's get them in the baggie. So here's my ones, whether or not the flip's gonna go well, I don't know, but we'll find out in a minute. I don't think these gloves are made for people like me, but big hands, little gloves. tokens out the fridge now we're just peeling them off onto their transfer paper so they have the patterns on the bottom side look at that wow you're good at this <laughs> perfect there's my uh, weird face what are you gonna say i don't know it's very halloweeny for a christmas one isn't it that's amazing something so simple that so entertaining so we finished our chocolate, made our slabs and our tokens, and this is how they turn out. They didn't even break. And that was the chocolate making experience with I Should Coco. Check it out online. Where did you find it? Airbnb? Uh, Airbnb suggested it to me. Airbnb suggested it, so that's where you find it. Lucy, did you have fun? I did have fun. Did you? Would you do it again? Yeah, would you? Yeah. Got some white chocolate, got some milk chocolate. Got lots of chocolate. Lots of chocolate. And no, I'm not sharing. <laughs> so now we've completed our little chocolate experience. Done a bit of shopping. We are heading to the place we're staying, which I still don't know where it is, but Lucy knows, don't you Lucy? I know. Right, I'll see you there. Dirty deeds. Where am I going? Hold on, stop here. Um, What's that sign say? Shepherd's Heart. This way. I like it. <laughs> we got a little shepherd's heart. But you've not seen the best bit yet. Come on. Wait. Wait. Yeah, just round here. Are we gonna go in? Yeah, but have a look. What's round here? Hot tub. Now do you know why you need your swim shorts? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, I 
<laughs> I had no idea where we were staying as well, but if you watch the other videos, you will know, know that is right up our street. We love it. And with a hot tub too. Look, comfy like a high rise bed. Popper. Oh, can we poop in this one? Yeah. We can poop in this one. Yay. Only flush toilet paper and natural waste. Just in case you were curious. So Lucy, you've gone back to the car to go grab some of the bags. And can I not, <laughs> literally speechless. You have done so well. I am so impressed. Thank you so much for this. This is an amazing Christmas present. Now, let's get in that hot tub. I ain't waiting around. Good morning. Good morning. New Year's Eve on a very, very wet, windy, horrible day. But we're gonna see what we can make of it. I'm not quite sure what the plan is. We were gonna try to do a bit of mining, but all the mines are shut due to it being New Year's Eve. And um, we're gonna go and have breakfast. Yeah, we're gonna go have breakfast now. Go feed my belly. Breakfast. Breakfast. So where we went for dinner, absolutely amazing place. That's why we're heading back there. It's called the Old Forge. We come all the way down this, it looks like a residential area, which well, it is. But when you get to the end, you get to the car park. Hope that helps in any way. Let's go get breakfast. Hello, we've had our breakfast. Now we're in Penzance and there's some big waves crashing against the harbour wall. So we're going to go have a look. We stumbled across this little garden palm trees. St. Michael's Mount over in the sea. Just about make it out. A lot of the architecture here is uh, based from Napoleon. He had a big influence on it after his Egyptian visit. Well, Egyptian campaign. Over the road, we have a bathing pool, which is actually designed for people to swim in on rough days like today. But you can see the waves are literally crashing over the back end. A very unforgiving sea today. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this is scary loose. I wouldn't go too far. For God, for country, for honour, I'm going to guess glory. Oh, for king. So if you fancy a swim this winter, which I can say I don't, yeah, Jubilee Pool. You've got the big pool at the back, and the little pool when it's full. Personally, I don't know the opening times or when you can and can't go in there, so you'll have to check that, but we've just seen a ferry come in and it has been rocking the boat. You can see how rough the sea is just by the amount that they're bobbing around. And that's in the calm harbour. If you're into your pirates, Penzance is the place to come. Everything around here is based around pirates. But I don't think they had boats like this. Pirates, Captain Hook, as you'd expect. Captain Hook. <laughs> Better get a little souvenir. Little pens on its oh, fridge magnet. <laughs> Swivel bridge, like the one in uh, Scotland. Got to put more swimming. Yeah, we've done some crazy things in our time, but... I'm not doing that. No way. Those women haven't even got wetsuits on, they're in bikinis. <laughs> so 
Take a breath. Oh, it feels a bit. Um... <laughs> oh, I can feel the cars go. Like, dun, 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 dun. Mm. Even the back roads are full of little artistic beauty. Just got some evil looks from the woman inside the house. Probably shouldn't have filmed, but... Cornish escape room. You don't make it out. And if you stray from the path of righteousness, they'll make you into a pasty. That's a Lloyd's bank. That amazing building you can see there with the double eyes is a bank. <laughs> Someone would think they've got money or something. Oh wait. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. So this is obviously the main town. We're gonna get out the shopping bit because this is boring. Not very scenic. <laughs> you think we're somewhere tropical with the size of those palms? You think we're somewhere tropical with the size of those palms? Yeah. Train station? Station. This little coaster walk right next to the sea. Hopefully we don't get wet. Isn't that right loose? Yeah. Yeah. She said yeah. Depends on the signal box. I think this guy knows it quite well because he's waiting for the right moment. Whoa! <laughs> you got lucky there! <laughs> Out of all the routes in Cornwall, why have we chose this one? There's us moaning about the rain and then we're walking basically under a wave. Look at the size of them! Oh, loose! Ah! Ah! Oh no! <laughs> We're going for it. We're going to try and get past. <laughs> get your little jug on. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Okay, that one got us. <laughs> you were drenched! And on that soggy note, we're going to head back and we're going to try and go to the southern part of Penzance. Whoop. Trying to dodge the waves in the process. Run, Lucy! Run! The old lifeboat house. Back to Abbey Warehouse very very old pub little shooter on the top Admiral Bembo <laughs> serving pirate smugglers and rum since 1695 This was home to Maria and Elizabeth Bramwell, the mother and aunt of Charlotte, Emily, Anne and Bramwell Bronte. Bronte? Bronte? Bronte. St. Mary's Church, Penzance. It's cheery, isn't it? Happy New Year! You're in a graveyard. Sundial's broken. Oh, no shadow. We are here and we're going there. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. 
<laughs> you should have gone to Spain. We're already wet, so we might as well keep going. Soggy right through to the boxes. We might as well swim. I'm sorry if the screen's blurry. It is quite wet. Whoa! <laughs> Skate park, little gap jump. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know I'm very much into mountain biking. Barely. Ah, strolling through on a nice summer's day. The force of the water is so strong. See that big rock? Actually moves the rock. That's when you know there's some force. Now after a long wet walk along the coastline, we've reached New Lynn. The rain has eased off, now we're soaking wet. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. The memorial to fishermen lost at sea was unveiled by HMRS, the Princess Royal, 11th October 2007. So all this rain that we've been splashing around in gets washed down this river and this is where it meets the sea. We've got two forces of water both pushing each way. See the waves coming up, meets this. Push it back out. Jubilee swimming pool, uh, yeah, Jubilee, Jubilee, Jubilee pool. And we've walked all the way around to here. But it's raining, it's pouring. And it's gonna start right. getting dark and we're gonna be getting even more wet. But there's no point walking on, so we're gonna head back now. to see where the rest of the day takes us. So that was Penzance. And this is New Lynn, complete. <laughs> well, there's obviously more to do, but yeah, heading off to the next location and see where we end up. I'll see you there. Sorry, on the way back though, I did spot something. Oh yeah. What do you call it when someone tries to stop you getting a girl but doesn't succeed? Bad cock block. Bad cock block. <laughs> After my own little immature entertainment there. Now we'll see you in the next place. <laughs> oh, and finally, we got back to our little shack, hut, shepherd's hut. Love shack. Love shack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was a bit wet, a bit windy. We got absolutely drenched. We thought we'd come back, have a quick switch of clothes, get nice and dry. Where I had new jeans on as well, 
all the dye has come off and stained my legs. And that means but it's time to take the bird to the air and show you it from the aerial view so you can see what a bird can see. I was going to say what, what I can see then, but... You're not bird. No, I'm not a bird. <laughs> So now the rain has stopped, just our luck, just as we get back. Lisa's gonna lock up and we're gonna head to Land's End, which is. We made it! <laughs> and it's chilly and windy. Windy. So let's go take a look what it's like in winter compared to what you saw in my last video in summer. We made it! At least go and stand next to it. That's really windy. It's the most southerly west point in the UK. Happy? Happy. <laughs> so heading back up sort of north. There is a waterfall over there. time before we get to fill our bellies. I'm so excited. I'm going to have a breaded fish sandwich. Very windy. Because <laughs> it might take us a little bit of a while to walk there. Put the speed cap on. Oh, come on, quickly, quickly. We're going to go for a speed walk again. Speed walk. Okay, three, two, one. I'll find Lucy. Hi, it's me. Found your bestie, it's me. <laughs> Castle. It says castle. We discovered it, worked it out. That's where it was on that mound. There is a natural trust sign there. To there. Should we do it a bit bigger in our step, a bit of a speed walk? Yeah. Okay. Down there you've got seven. 
too. Will you help? Yes, we will. So this is what helps keep this coastal path and everything in check. That's the trust. They asked for my help. I'm asking for help. I'm helping. I'm helping. <laughs> you help. Logan, rock in. Yeah, and on that little coastal walk, we couldn't get to the waterfall because it was just too close to the cliff edge and it was dark, so it's not a good idea. And if you're into shipwrecks, there is actually a shipwreck down on one of the uh, beaches, but we couldn't reach that either. So now we're going to the Lake of Rock. Do you fillet steak tonight with all the trimmings? Oh, nice. So after a lovely meal at Logan Rock Inn, good steak um, we've got back to the little hut now Ooh. it's really hot it's nice hot. Next week, a year later. here we are at half past 11 at night on New Year's Eve with an axe Oh, did you see that? We'll update you when we get a bit further. So now we have about 15 minutes left until midnight. Lovely rain. We're gonna try and light a fire and do some sparklers. If the fire don't work, we're still doing the sparklers. We're seeing 2023 in. With fire. Someone gave me fire. So we managed to get a little fire going. Rain has come off a little bit, which is handy. Lucy's got a glow stick. Ready? Yeah. Oh, it's so purple. Woo! Do you love it? I love it. It's pink. <laughs> so we've literally got a few more minutes left. Of 2022 if you've watched my videos at any point the mountain biking videos the walking videos any point through 2002 I really do appreciate it um, you said 2002. yeah that's this year it's 2022 what did I say 2002 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like wait that doesn't sound right seeing this year out with Lucy toasty fire Man built fire. Man built fire. And we've got sparklers. We have, we sparklers. have sparklers. Glow stick sparklers. Glow stick sparklers. Ooh. Lucy's getting there. Special. Oh, I'd love a blue one. Shall I crack your glow stick? Go on, crack it. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two thousand and twenty-three. Two thousand and twenty-three. This log is slippery. Extreme fire! Yay, we've 
made it through another year. <laughs> I didn't die. Still got two duds left. Whoa, that's well cool. <laughs> yeah, that's like a good firework in itself. To all my friends and family, happy new year. I wish you all the best one. Now we're just gonna sit, chill out. Maybe get in some cheese and crackers in a bit. Are you happy, Luce? I'm happy. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm very happy. I had like a peachy peach. Happy New Year! Welcome back to another day. Not that you've gone anywhere. <laughs> but we are now in Ponsonuth. Um, we're going to be checking out a little nature reserve that Lucy's found, which is called what, sorry? Kennel Valley Nature Reserve. Kennel Valley Nature Reserve. In the village, you do have to park on outside, but obviously just be respectful of the, uh, the people who live here. More Cornish gems. It's quite hard to miss the entrance, but it's a little green sign up the road. As you break through the ash trees and the beech trees, you'll find some little, well I say little, some are quite big structures hidden within the woods that used to have a past, which Lucy's gonna tell you about now, aren't you Lucy? Yes, and it was a previous gunpowder factory. A gunpowder factory? Yep. And do you know why it's a good place for a gunpowder factory? Gunpowder, gunpowder factory. No. Because they could divert the river to power the wheels. Oh. To power the wheels. What wheels? The ones that make the gunpowder. We're going to see are the wheels? in a minute. Even the root system shows no mercy. We're reaching straight for the water and all these little hidden caverns, the little hidden entrances. That does go very deep, but yeah, who knows where all this stuff goes. So there used to be 50 separate buildings in operation here, but only a few of them are still here. Uh, the mixing house is still here, and the change house, and several of the mill parts. 20 kg of powder was ever allowed in one house at one time, it was so dangerous. In 1838, five mills here blew up one after the other, but only one person died, but he did leave ten children, which I guess is why he struggled. Um, and there was a, another explosion a few years later by a worker called John Marshall, who was blown apart, and his head was actually found a quarter of a mile away. Found this place on Airbnb. This is really where we've been staying. A bit rough Wow, look at that. Very deep water. It's cool though, you just walk through the woods and you find all these quirky little places, which makes you wonder what this was once upon a time.
the old remains of the wheels you can still see the metalwork big cog on there all the history that's in these teeth drop in going down what looks like used to be the old stairs they're not very straight and flat now <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous everywhere. Big woodland and a lot of history just dumped straight in the middle. I can imagine it's nice in the summer. This would have been a giant blast wall to try and help any impact of explosions. It's funny how five buildings blew up but the wall didn't. <sighs> <laughs> so not only did they choose this place because of the river and they could divert it obviously to help them but it's a prime location in a dense forest so if there was never an explosion, which there was, it would help dampen the blow and absorb you know, some of the explosions so it didn't affect the outside village We even got built in water slide look
Stone. <laughs> As we were walking around, we've seen another money tree. So look at all the coins. A lot of them have lost their shape, their colour. Do you want to add one, Lise? Let's add one. Yeah. There we go. Some of the patterns still in the floor. Not quite sure what from, but interesting. Wedge. And judging by the metal bar, I'm guessing there would have been a, a gate here as well to help divert the water and build this bit up, making it a bit better for the wheel to turn. So that was a little walk through Kennel Vale. Gorgeous little woodland, as you can see. So if you're in sort of mid Cornwall, Truro area, head down here and yeah, dog friendly. Don't have to pay to get in. And it's just gorgeous scenery. If you're into your cascades and waterfalls and old ruins tucked inside a woodland full of history. But that's this location sorted. Now we're going to, where are we going to? St Moore's Castle. St Moore's Castle. How would you pronounce it? Long, muddy walk back to the cart. And I'll see you at the next place. And here we are. Moore's Castle. <sighs> Overlooked by Falmouth over the other side. Start of the English Channel. Three pound if you're not a member, uh, English Heritage, or free if you are. But if you're already a member, you probably know that. And we're gonna get in there and explore. Come through the other side, and then come out this door to the start of the castle. Beautiful. Your map. Lucy, hang on. <laughs> it's a little hole, isn't it? Lucy, do you know why stairs were built like this? No, <laughs> Because if people were attacking, most of them were right-handed, so they wouldn't be able to get round, but it would make it easier for the people defending.
time of Henry VIII, which was 1539 to 1540. one out of a series of castles that were built to help defend against the French. Isn't that right? Yeah. Do you want another one? Go on then. It's shaped like a clover leaf. Cool. Easy, <laughs> done it. I had to put her on a time lapse because we've been here all day. For that, for a fireplace. What's this? Forever live the soul of King Henry VIII. Which, can you come up to the door? <laughs> it's written there. Right, should we carry on to the next? Is a drop. That makes me feel a bit weird walking over it. Whoa. How do they suppose I can have this castle ready to fight with so many delays? There are plenty of Spanish merchants in Foy and Penren, but he may have some supply of powder and shot I could buy, or trade. He has plenty of dubious sources. Now, I'll just pen that message. What man? Where's my sword? No cannon to the forward bastion! So you go in the gift shop? <laughs> you come out of the gift shop, you go across the bridge and in the door. We are currently in here. This room is the soldiers' quarters. Italian masterpiece. to this Italian masterpiece one. This was actually found in the sea. It's been recovered. The amount of cannon holes here means that this place would have had a very strong defense. Got a little water pump. Hey. Hmm. Wow, that's cool. Do a quick zoom round. A place. It's got to be about ten foot. We've got wood in the little wood burner that oh, I've still got all the original brickwork in there. And the view extractors walk, that's a long way up. Back to the map. We're gonna explore the grounds now. Let's go! So as you can see there's three shields that have been carved in. This is the first. The other one I've just filmed, which is on that corner. So I'm guessing the other one is the other side. Cannons would have been. 
as you can see they got a replica there you can still see the old swivels and the old swivel bars as they're pointing out to sea they would slide this left and right <laughs> so yeah it would just swivel to get the aim six pound of quick firing gun at Plymouth similar to those at St Moore's in the late Victorian period so over there in the distance is Pendennis Castle um, both Moore's Castle and Pendennis had a massive cannon to help uh, well to defend against any sort of intruders but 1540 Falmouth didn't exist but important trading towns lay up river at Penryn and Truro ships were the most important means of transport for trading goods but they would both be able to fire halfway over so it would make it literally impossible for anyone so this bit that we're currently in is actually a tiny Tudor fort which is actually older than the castle up there itself not much left of it now but there would have been another floor this was for the water and this was the oven Partially blocked that windows. Hmm. No one's in. We can go in. Oh, this is a. Oh, there's the explosives. This is where they would keep the gunpowder away from the castle. Right. It's a quick tour of Moore's Castle. Absolutely amazing. So now you've had a little look around here with us. We're going to head a little bit more north, northeast-ish, to Methagissi, tiny little fishing uh, village, beautiful harbour because Lucy's booked somewhere for us to go and eat, so we'll head there and we'll meet you there, see you in a bit. So we've made it to Methagissi, I mean some of the drivers on the way here, look what we saw. I tell you, these Cornish drivers. Sorry, sir, you can't park there. Mad, isn't it? Took that corner a bit quick. But we have now reached Mowigissi. Beautiful little fishing town. Colours. It's just, yeah, picturesque. Absolutely gorgeous. Tiny little staircase, about three foot wide, leading down to a little harbour. Uh -huh. Looking out for the fish.
Had to duck in because once again, it's like peeing out of rain. Ah, happy New Year. Look at that. do you have in your garden? I have a water fountain. What do you have? I have an anchor. <laughs> We're gonna head back down now. We had a little sort of side view of the harbour but we need to get down because we're having dinner. So I'll take you with me. Speed walk all the way through the little harbour side walk. Hope you liked it. <laughs> Cute little place. We're going to go for food now and then we're heading over to the Lost Gardens of Heligan for the night trail. Nice light show, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So we'll leave you here in Mabagissi and we'll see you there at the gardens. Hope you enjoyed it. But just quickly before we get there, that shark's fin place for food, Mabagissi, right on the harbour front. Absolutely gorgeous food. Definitely go back there. And they even changed some of the ingredients just so it was okay for old Lucy here. <laughs> <laughs> but now the harbour's all lit up and it looks gorgeous. Lights all the way around. Yeah, now we're going to the Lost Gardens of Heligan. Now I will really see you there. See you in a minute. We're here! So we've made it to Lost Gardens of Heligan, just outside of Mervigissi by about 5-10 minutes. So if you come to Lost Gardens of Heligan any time through the summer or the start of the year, it's just gardens, but gorgeous gardens, but in the winter over December and January, they have the light show here. Award winning may I add. It's already cute, we ain't even in there yet. 
you've just seen as well. It's all for charity. Pericles and Paws, the hedgehog charity. Hedgehog charity? That That's makes so it cute. worth it. Totally. Sparkly arch. <laughs> well, I mean, It's just so magical. I might be a bit too tall for this little alleyway of lights. It's like a giant mushroom. Oh, so bright. <laughs> Dove box, or as Lucy calls it, the bug house. Some big bugs. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pigeon. What we're we doing? No, that's better. Bacon. There I am before Lucy kissed me. Look at that for a tractor. <laughs> so we got marshmallows to taste in. I'm gonna get in there as well. Oh, that is warm. Look at that, beautiful. Sorry, is that right? Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> it might be a while before this actually makes sense because it's probably going to be about end of January, start of February. <laughs> Barbecue hut in case you get a bit hungry around the trail. Where we get our hot chocolate from, little mouse. Green.
We're entering a very special installation in support of our charity this year. Just around the corner are 89 shooting stars. Each star represents a bereaved family of Little Harbour Children Hospice Southwest. Take a moment to reflect. That is absolutely beautiful. This is gorgeous. Wellingtons. <laughs> and he's got his half drunk on the side of his barrow. The potting shed. What owls will be like? What is that thing? Red squirrel. My favourite. Badger. Okay, this is my new favourite, the fox. Through the burrow we go. And that's the end of the Lost Gardens of Heligan tour. And that was the Lost Garden of Heligan light trail. Uh, yeah, we got back last night, had a bit of time in the jacuzzi, hopped up whatever you want to call it <laughs> and then uh <clears throat> yeah wiggled our way back in here had our last night woke up a bit tired this morning but we're gonna head into Nuki get breakfast um maybe check out the zoo if it's open and the aquarium so a bit of a wildlife section from now so if you like your animals stay tuned <laughs> so we made it to Nuki. We're down at the front of Toan Beach, which is one of the beaches of Nuki. And right on the seafront, you've got the Blue Reef Aquarium. We're going to go see some fishies. Yeah. Can you spot the fish? They're very well camouflaged. Yeah, that on the sand. Place.
แล้วนะThe big turtle that you can see in here is actually blind. That's why he keeps bumping into everything. So that was the aquarium uh, right down on the seafront of Toan Beach, Newquay. Now we're heading just onto the outskirts of Newquay to go to the zoo. We're going to the zoo. Yeah. So when you get to the zoo, you drive all the way to the back of the car park and you've got a leisure park as well. So yeah, if you've got kids, you've got the park just down there, a bounce park, a big like indoor play area, swimming pool. So if you have got kids, it's a good day, good day out of activities, all in quite squashed into a condensed area. We're heading to the zoo. Nuki Zoo just got in, £18 per person if you're an adult or a big child like me. <laughs> so we're going to go see some mammals. Animals. Scarlet McCaw. Red panda. Black neck swan. Look, a wild seagull. Meerkats here, and there is one meerkat who is in charge of everybody else. Now, who thinks that meerkat is a boy meerkat? Anybody hands up if it's a boy in charge? No, no. Yeah. Hands up if it's a girl in charge? No, no. Yeah, absolutely. So, meerkat society is a brilliant example of a matriarchy, and our leader of the mob here is called Marge, and she is pretty big. So, we call her Large Marge. She's just over there now, digging, digging in that bit of foliage over there. She is the leader of the mob and she will give all of the others jobs to do. So Meerkat Society is very, very strict. They all have their roles and positions that they have to fit into. 
and this includes foragers who will be out looking for food, uh, babysitters if Marge did decide to have any pups, and those on sentry duty as well, which is when you see meerkats standing on their hind legs and scanning the skies and deserts for any sign of potential predators. So I mentioned about pups with Marge. So Marge is the only meerkat who is allowed to breed. So the dominant female will withhold all breeding rights and she will be the only one who is allowed to have any pups. If any of the other members of the mob had pups with any of the males, they would be outcast and their pups would be dead. Lucy, there's a slide. Lucy, there's, there's a slide. The I know, but the inachidemy says slide. We could come back up and do the time. Got my car keys. I'm going in. Going in. See you in a minute. Oh, 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 it's a bit small. It's like it's made for kids or something. Whoa! Not the fastest slide in the world. This one's name is Superb Fruit Dove. It's not just a fruit dove, it's a superb fruit dove. Although, what is that for a name? I know, she smells, doesn't she, mate? Can you let me stroke you? Step on the mat to stop the engine for in second try. close to him. Oh, hello. No, you can't have the camera. They all come to say hello. Hey, no, you can't have the camera. Hey, no. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, here we go. He's got a better view of the red panda now. He's adorable, isn't he? God, it didn't take him long to get up there. I need one of them to come work with me. Trees will never be this. Doing tree work would be so much easier. That was Nuki Zoo. We showed you most of it, but we're not going to show you all of it because you've got to come here. Lucy's happy because I've got her a uh, new juice box. New juice box. <laughs> if anyone needed validation that Tom was a big kid, this is it. Drinking his milk. I've got a can of milk. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's vanilla as well, right? Mm hmm. So that was Nuki Zoo and the aquarium that we've just nailed out today. Good fun. I mean, this is not the biggest zoo in the world, but it's got enough there to keep you busy. Um, yeah, definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. Um, and obviously the leisure world with the fun, with the trampoline park and the pools and everything. If you've got kids, it's a perfect day out, or if you're like me, just a giant kid, then yeah. It's a brilliant day out. <laughs> but yeah, we've had we've had so we've packed in so much this holiday. I, I I'm speechless. Probably when I'm so tired where we've literally done about 30 odd thousand steps a day. Um, <clears throat> but now we're gonna go towards home slowly and we're going to go to Galithia Falls, which is a area of outstanding natural beauty in the sort of in the middle of uh, Cornwall. Because on route home, it looks really nice, beautiful. So we're going to go there for one last little explore. So stay tuned, and we'll meet you at Goliath Falls. So we've made it to our last stop of the video. Galithia Falls. So you'll come down the road, every little stone bridge, and you'll find yourself in Lonesville Car Park here, next to Inky Smokehouse and Saloon. Look at all the animals. Fresh water eels, yellow eels, salmon, salmon and trout. You do get otters here as well, but I can't see that on there. Interesting. Hidden amongst the woods throughout the forest, there are mine shafts, obviously. They are cordoned off to protect you. I'll take the high road. <laughs> you see of years and years of where the trees have grown over it, all the rugged landscape. That is a rock. It's been swallowed up by the tree and it's not a small tree look. It is so gorgeous the way this river just breaks up through the forest and with the rain we've had it's really flowing.
And as you can see, all the moss on the trees, on the tree branches. But yeah, the moisture in the air, it keeps it, keeps all the moss growing. So if you've watched my other videos, you would have seen the money trees dotted everywhere around. But this time, it's a money stump. Two money stumps. And some big stepping stones, which obviously I'm going to be a big kid and play around on. There's nothing underneath that. <laughs> Still on a rock that sticks out. Quite cool though. think just ahead there's quite a steep fall because we can hear it and you can probably hear it and from here I can see the white water just dipping over the edge there so we're going to check it out so I've made it down to the most aggressive part of the river and it is very loud as you can tell by the amount of white water So I want to give you a better insight of a view of the river, so I'm going to fly it upstream to get a bit of an aerial view with the bird. Let's do this.
That was a good view, isn't it, of the river? I wouldn't have been able to have stood there. I better catch up with Lucy, because God knows where she is. Whew. Yeah. And all this time I was call it, calling it Galithia. It's Galitha. Don't know where I added the extra I, but yeah. How was it? Beautiful. <laughs> that is the end of our little Cornish adventure. We saw some beautiful places, absolutely outstanding natural beauty. And I can see why they call it that. We've had loads of adventures. We'll be doing some more very soon no doubt and we will be back who knows where but keep watching but if you could like subscribe if you want to see more content more things for days out where to walk mountain biking i really appreciate you getting to the end of this video because i know it's not a short one but hopefully it will inspire you to get out in cornwall and explore some of the places that we did because it has been amazing we're now back to reality back to work back home which i'm not too keen on <laughs> but like I say it won't be long and we will be back and um, yeah that's it thank you for watching I'm gonna take it to the sky to say goodbye and that is the end of another little Cornish adventure thank you love you all <laughs>